The Galactic Council's laughter echoed through the cavernous chamber as Earth's tiny fleet appeared on the holographic display. Joshua Morgan, Earth's sole representative, stood rigid, his face a mask of calm. He knew what they didn't. Size wasn't everything. Joshua's fingers tightened on the podium. The annual military review was going exactly as Earth strategists had predicted. Alien races from across the galaxy watched with a mix of amusement and pity as the holographic projections of Earth's space fleet paled in comparison to the massive armadas of other species. The Council's main chamber, a grand amphitheater of shimmering alloys and pulsing energy fields, buzzed with activity. Representatives from a hundred worlds whispered and gestured, their attention fixed on the apparent humiliation of humanity. I move to reduce Earth's status and limit its influence in galactic affairs, Rigor announced, his tentacles writhing with barely concealed glee. The motion passed swiftly. Joshua's protest fell on deaf ears, drowned out by the smug satisfaction of the council members. As the session adjourned, he retreated to a private alcove, activating his secure communicator. Initiate Thunderbolt Protocol, he spoke softly. Light years away, on Earth, military command sprang into action. The HSS Thunderbolt, a single warship that appeared unremarkable from the outside, disengaged from its covert docking bay. Its experimental technology, hidden beneath an unassuming exterior, represented the pinnacle of human ingenuity and the key to their survival in a hostile galaxy. As the Thunderbolt made its way to the Council's space station, blending seamlessly with the myriad of small vessels coming and going, an alarm blared through the council chambers. A hostile alien force approached, its intentions clear, disrupt the council and assert dominance. Panic spread like wildfire. The large, lumbering warships of the council members struggled to respond, their size and bureaucracy working against them in the face of a swift attack. He strode back into the chamber where chaos reigned. Earth offers its assistance, he announced, his voice cutting through the din. Regor scoffed. What assistance could you possibly... His words were cut short as the view screen flared to life. The HSS Thunderbolt burst into action, its advanced propulsion systems allowing it to dance between enemy ships with impossible agility. Energy weapons of unimaginable power lashed out, carving through the hostile fleet's defenses like paper. The Council watched in stunned silence as the tiny human vessel turned the tide of battle. Ship after ship of the invading force fell to the Thunderbolt's onslaught. Those that could retreated, their confidence shattered by this display of human military prowess. As the last enemy ship disappeared from sensors, Joshua turned to face the Council. The chamber was silent, save for the soft whimper of a Tellarite diplomat. I believe, Joshua said, his voice steady, that we need to reassess Earth's status in this council, and perhaps reevaluate your understanding of humanity's potential. The council members nodded, their earlier mockery replaced by a newfound respect and fear of the species they had so gravely underestimated. The laughter had stopped, and the true strength of humanity's tiny fleet had been revealed. The galaxy would never be the same. The chamber remained silent as Joshua's words hung in the air. The once mocking faces of the council members now bore expressions of shock and grudging respect. Regor, the Tellarite diplomat, shifted uncomfortably in his seat, his earlier sneers replaced by a scowl of barely concealed anger. This demonstration, began Councillor Vex, an elderly Andorian with piercing blue skin, certainly merits further discussion. I propose we reconvene in one standard cycle to reassess Earth's status within the Galactic Council. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the assembly. As the delegates filed out of the chamber, Joshua caught snippets of hushed conversations, a mix of awe and concern coloring their tones. He allowed himself a small smile before making his way to the secure communication alcove. Sarah Chen's holographic image flickered to life, her eyes bright with the adrenaline of recent combat. Thank you, Ambassador. The Thunderbolt performed beyond our expectations. We're running diagnostics now, but preliminary reports show minimal damage. As Joshua predicted, the emergency session the following day was tense with hardly restrained curiosity and suspicion. He stood at the center of the chamber, 
feeling the weight of a hundred alien gazes upon him. Honored members of the Galactic Council, Joshua began, his voice steady and clear, the events of yesterday have demonstrated that Earth is more than capable of contributing to the safety and stability of our shared galaxy. We request a re-evaluation of our status and increased representation in matters of galactic security. A chorus of voices erupted, some in support, others in protest. Regor's tentacles writhed as he shouted over the din. We cannot simply accept this display at face value. For all we know, this could be some form of trickery or illusion. Counselor Vex raised a hand, silencing the chamber. Ambassador Morgan, while your ship's performance was indeed impressive, Regor raises a valid point. We propose a series of controlled military exercises to fully assess Earth's capabilities. Would you agree to such an arrangement? Joshua felt a flutter of anticipation in his chest. This was the opportunity Earth had been waiting for. We would be honored to participate, Counselor. As the details of the exercises were hammered out, Joshua noticed a pair of striking violet eyes watching him from across the chamber. They belonged to Zara, the Arcturian diplomat. Her silver-scaled skin shimmered as she approached him after the session. Ambassador Morgan, she said, her voice melodic and otherworldly, I must commend you on your handling of the Council. It's refreshing to see such adaptability in a species so new to galactic politics. Joshua inclined his head, intrigued by her forwardness. Thank you, Diplomat Zara. We humans pride ourselves on our ability to rise to challenges. Indeed, she replied, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. I look forward to learning more about your people during these exercises. Perhaps we could discuss human culture over a meal. As Joshua considered her offer, his communicator buzzed. Captain Chen's voice came through, terse and professional. Ambassador, we've received the parameters for the exercises. There are some concerns we need to discuss in private. Joshua excused himself, promising Zara they would continue their conversation later. He made his way to a secure briefing room where Captain Chen's hologram awaited him. What's the situation, Captain? He asked, noting the tight set of her jaw. The exercises are more extensive than we anticipated, she replied. They want a full demonstration of our offensive and defensive capabilities. We'll need to modify the Thunderbolt to conceal some of our more advanced systems. Joshua frowned. Can we maintain our edge while doing so? It'll be tricky, but my crew is up to the challenge. We'll show them enough to impress, but not enough to give away all our secrets. As the day of the exercises approached, Tension mounted both on Earth and among the alien delegations. The remote star system chosen for the trials buzzed with activity as ships from various races arrived to observe. Aboard the Thunderbolt, Captain Chen addressed her crew. This is it, people. The eyes of the galaxy are on us. Remember your training, trust in this ship, and let's show them what humanity is capable of. The first exercise began with a swarm of unmanned drones converging on the Thunderbolt. Chen's fingers danced over the controls, guiding the ship through a series of impossible maneuvers. Energy beams lanced out with pinpoint accuracy, each shot finding its mark. In the observation deck, alien delegates watched in stunned silence as the human vessel effortlessly outmaneuvered and destroyed wave after wave of attackers. Joshua stood among them, his face impassive, but his heart swelling with pride. As the exercise concluded, he felt a presence at his side. Zara had joined him, her eyes wide with admiration. Remarkable, she breathed. Your ship moves like a living thing. Joshua allowed himself a small smile. We've had to adapt quickly to survive in this vast galaxy. It's good to see our efforts bearing fruit. Their conversation was cut short by a commotion near the Tellarite delegation. Ragor was gesticulating wildly his face contorted with rage. Impossible, he shouted. They must be cheating. No ship that size could possess such capabilities. On the main view screen, the Thunderbolt was suddenly surrounded by massive capital ships, their weapons charged and aimed at the human vessel. Captain Chen's voice crackled over the comms, tight with controlled panic. Ambassador, these aren't holograms. We're detecting real energy signatures. Someone's turned this simulation into an actual combat scenario. Joshua's mind raced, realizing the gravity of the situation. 
The Thunderbolt now faced a deadly threat, and the choice before them was stark. Reveal their full capabilities and ensure survival, or maintain their secrets at the risk of destruction. As the hostile ships closed in, weapons primed, the Thunderbolt's engines flared to life. The next few moments would determine not just the fate of the ship and its crew, but the future of humanity's place in the galactic community. Community. The galaxy would never be the same. The chamber remained silent as Joshua's words hung in the air. The once mocking faces of the council members now bore expressions of shock and grudging respect. Rager, the Tellarite diplomat, shifted uncomfortably in his seat, his earlier sneers replaced by a scowl of barely concealed anger. As the hostile ships closed in, weapons primed, the Thunderbolt's engines flared to life. Captain Chen's fingers flew across the control panel, her mind racing through possible scenarios. She knew what needed to be done, but the consequences would be far-reaching. All hands, battle stations, she ordered, her voice steady despite the gravity of the situation. Initiate Protocol Omega. The crew responded with practiced efficiency, each member understanding the weight of this decision. As the enemy vessels drew closer, the Thunderbolt began to change. On the observation deck, gasps of astonishment rippled through the gathered diplomats. The sleek hull of the human ship seemed to ripple and shift, panels sliding apart to reveal previously hidden weapon ports and energy emitters. What had appeared to be a modest vessel now bristled with advanced technology, its true form significantly more imposing than anyone had imagined. Joshua watched the transformation with a mixture of pride and apprehension. He knew this revelation would alter the course of human-alien relations forever, but the immediate threat left them no choice. Captain Chen's voice crackled over the comms, addressing both her crew and the stunned observers. Activating primary defense systems. A shimmering energy field sprang to life around the Thunderbolt, its iridescent surface deflecting the first salvo from the attacking ships with ease. The aliens watched in disbelief as their weapons, capable of crippling most known vessels, dissipated harmlessly against the human ship's shields. Regor's face contorted with rage and disbelief. Impossible, he sputtered, tentacles writhing. Their technology, it can't be. But the Thunderbolt was far from finished. Captain Chen's voice rang out again, calm and determined. Weapons free. Target hostile vessels. A swarm of missiles erupted from the Thunderbolt's newly revealed launch bays. Unlike any projectiles the alien observers had seen before, these weapons weaved and darted through space with unnatural precision. They sliced through the enemy formation, each finding its mark with devastating effect. Explosions blossomed in the void as several attacking ships were disabled or destroyed in the initial volley. On the bridge, Captain Chen worked in concert with the ship's advanced AI, now fully unleashed. Holographic displays flickered around her, showing predicted enemy maneuvers and optimal response patterns. She guided the Thunderbolt through a series of impossible turns and jukes, leaving their attackers firing at empty space. How are they doing this? An Andorian delegate muttered, his antennae twitching in agitation. No organic pilot could execute such maneuvers. Zara, the Arcturian diplomat, stood transfixed by the display. Her violet eyes narrowed as she pieced together the implications of what she was seeing. She turned to Joshua, who was frantically working a communications device. Ambassador Morgan, she said, her melodic voice tinged with urgency. This has gone too far. We must stop this before it escalates further. Joshua nodded grimly. I'm trying to gather evidence of the Tellarite sabotage. If we can prove this was a deliberate attempt to harm our vessel. Zara's silver scales shimmered as she straightened, decision made. Leave that to me. I'll call for a ceasefire. As Zara moved among the other delegates, her impassioned pleas for reason and restraint began to sway opinions. Meanwhile, Joshua continued his covert data gathering knowing that the political aftermath of this incident could be as dangerous as the battle itself. On the Thunderbolt, alarms blared as the enemy launched another coordinated assault. Captain Chen's hands danced across the controls, guiding the ship through a corkscrew maneuver that should have torn a vessel of its size apart. 
The advanced structural integrity field held, and the Thunderbolt emerged unscathed, retaliating with another barrage of its hyper-accurate missiles. Her tactical officer responded crisply, Shields holding at 92%. No damage to critical systems. Enemy fleet reduced by 60%. Chen allowed herself a small smile. The Thunderbolt was performing beyond even their most optimistic projections. But she knew that every moment this battle continued, more of Earth's technological secrets were being exposed. Back in the council chamber, Zara's efforts were bearing fruit. A growing chorus of voices called for an immediate end to hostilities. The Galactic Council, faced with the undeniable display of human military superiority and the swelling support for Earth among its members, had no choice but to act. The effect was instantaneous. The attacking ships revealed to be unmanned drones under Tellarite control, powered down their weapons, and adopted a neutral posture. The Thunderbolt, however, maintained its defensive stance, shield still humming with energy. Captain Chen's voice came through the comms, sharp and clear. This is the HSS Thunderbolt. We will stand down once we have confirmation that all hostile forces have been fully neutralized. As the Council scrambled to provide the necessary assurances, Joshua turned his attention to Rigor. The Tellarite diplomat was attempting to slink away from the chamber, his earlier bravado replaced by panic. Not so fast, Joshua called out, his voice carrying an edge of steel. I believe you have some explaining to do, Regor. The chamber fell silent as Joshua presented the evidence he had gathered, laying bare the Tellarite plot to sabotage the exercise and humiliate Earth. Regor's protests died on his lips as the proof mounted, his fellow delegates regarding him with a mixture of shock and disgust. As the political storm began to brew, the Thunderbolt slowly reverted to its original configuration, its true capabilities once again hidden from view. Captain Chen exhaled slowly, knowing that while the immediate danger had passed, the repercussions of this incident were only beginning to unfold. On the observation deck, Zara approached Joshua, her violet eyes gleaming with a mixture of admiration and curiosity. It seems we have much to discuss, Ambassador Morgan, she said softly. Your people are full of surprises. Joshua met her gaze, sensing the potential for both opportunity and complication in her words. Indeed we are, Diplomat Zara, and I suspect this is only the beginning. As the Galactic Council prepared to convene an emergency session to reassess Earth's position in the interstellar community, Joshua steeled himself for the challenges ahead. The Thunderbolt's revelatory performance had irrevocably altered the balance of power in the galaxy. Now it was time to navigate the treacherous waters of galactic politics and ensure humanity's place among the stars. The chamber buzzed with tension and excitement. Diplomats huddled in small groups, their hushed conversations a mixture of awe and concern. Joshua knew that the next few hours would be crucial in shaping Earth's future in the galactic community. He straightened his uniform, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Ahead, the air in the chamber crackled with anticipation as he stepped forward to address the council. Esteemed delegates, Joshua began, his voice steady and resolute. The events we've just witnessed have undoubtedly altered the landscape of our galactic community. Earth stands ready to embrace its new role and responsibilities. As Joshua spoke, the council erupted into a flurry of debate. Voices rose and fell, some expressing admiration for humanity's technological prowess, others voicing concern over the potential shift in the balance of power. In the days that followed, Joshua found himself at the center of a whirlwind of diplomatic activity. He moved from one meeting to another, negotiating Earth's position with various factions within the Council. The Tellarites, their reputation in tatters after the exposed sabotage attempt, retreated to the sidelines. Joshua seized this opportunity to push for human representation on key Council committees. Earth's unique perspective could be invaluable to the Military Oversight Committee. Joshua argued during a closed-door session with the Council's inner circle. Our experiences adapting to the challenges of space have given us insights that could benefit all species. While Joshua worked the diplomatic channels, Captain Sarah Chen and the crew of the HSS Thunderbolt received new orders. They were to embark on a series of goodwill missions to key worlds within the Council's sphere of influence. 
As the Thunderbolt prepared to depart, Chen stood on the bridge, reviewing their itinerary. First stop, Arcturian homeworld, she announced to her crew. Let's show them what humanity has to offer. The journey to Arcturus was uneventful, but Chen could sense the anticipation building among her crew. As they entered orbit, the planet's swirling silver oceans and crystalline cities came into view, eliciting gasps of wonder from even the most seasoned officers. Chen beamed down with a small delegation to meet with Arcturian military officials. The meeting took place in a vast chamber with walls that shimmered like liquid metal. General Zarax, a towering figure with iridescent scales, greeted them warmly. Chen nodded, her expression carefully neutral. We're certainly open to the idea, General. However, I must stress that some of our more advanced systems are not up for negotiation at this time. As Chen navigated the delicate waters of military diplomacy, Joshua found himself facing challenges of a more personal nature back on the Council space station. His growing closeness with Zara, the Arcturian diplomat, had not gone unnoticed. Ambassador Morgan, a stern-faced Vulcan delegate, approached him after a particularly heated council session. There are concerns about your ability to maintain objectivity given your personal entanglements. Joshua felt a flash of irritation but kept his composure. I assure you my personal relationships have no bearing on my dedication to Earth's interests or the fairness of my dealings with the Council. Despite his assurances, Joshua knew he was treading a fine line. That evening, as he and Zara shared a quiet moment in the station's arboretum, surrounded by plants from a hundred worlds, he broached the subject. Zara, I hope you understand that our relationship can't interfere with our duties, he said softly, watching the play of starlight on her silvery skin. Zara's violet eyes met his, filled with understanding and a hint of sadness. Of course, Joshua, we both serve greater purposes than ourselves. Over the next weeks, Earth's influence within the Council grew, but so did the opposition. The Vorgons, threatened by humanity's rise, launched a covert campaign to undermine Earth's standing. Rumors of human aggression and technological dangers spread through the galactic grapevine. In response, Earth's government activated Project Prometheus. Joshua found himself in a secure briefing room, facing a holographic projection of Admiral Hastings. Ambassador, we're moving forward with our colonization plans, Hastings explained. The first target is a planet we're calling New Horizon. It's resource-rich and strategically located. Joshua frowned. It's also in disputed territory, near Vorgon space. This could escalate tensions significantly. Hastings nodded grimly. That's a risk we'll have to manage. Captain Chen and the Thunderbolt will lead a small fleet to protect our colonists and establish our presence. As the Thunderbolt approached New Horizon, long-range sensors painted a troubling picture. A massive Vorgon battle group already orbited the planet, their ships forming a menacing blockade. On the bridge, Captain Chen's fingers danced over her console, assessing their options. We're outgunned, she announced to her crew, but not outclassed. Maintain our approach, but be ready for anything. Back on the council station, Joshua raced against time to prevent a catastrophic confrontation. He called an emergency session, proposing a novel solution. A joint scientific mission, he explained to the assembled delegates. Both humans and Vorgons, working together to study New Horizons' unique properties. We can turn this potential flashpoint into an opportunity for cooperation. His words were met with a mix of skepticism and cautious interest. As the debate raged, Joshua received an urgent communication from Captain Chen. Ambassador. We've detected unusual energy readings from the planet's surface, Chen reported, her voice tight with excitement and concern. Preliminary scans indicate alien ruins, ancient ones. Joshua's mind raced, realizing the game had changed entirely. New Horizon was no longer just a strategic location. It was potentially one of the most important archaeological finds in galactic history. As he prepared to address the Council with this new information, alarms blared throughout the station. A rogue Vorgon warship had opened fire on a human scout vessel near New Horizon. The Thunderbolt had intervened, disabling the Vorgon ship without destroying it. Joshua took a deep breath, knowing that the next few moments would shape the future of humanity's place in the galaxy. He stepped up to the podium, 
all eyes on him as he prepared to navigate the most critical diplomatic challenge of his career. Esteemed delegates, he began, his voice ringing clear through the chamber. We stand at a crossroads. The events unfolding at New Horizon offer us a choice, conflict or cooperation. The ruins we've discovered belong not just to humanity or the Vorgans, but to all sentient life in our galaxy. I propose we form a multi-species expedition to uncover their secrets together. As murmurs of discussion swept through the chamber, Joshua caught Zara's eye. She gave him a subtle nod of encouragement. Whatever came next, he knew that the fate of Earth, and perhaps the entire galactic community, hung in the balance. Balance. The chamber fell silent, all eyes fixed on Joshua as they awaited his next words. Before Joshua could continue, an urgent message flashed across his data pad. He scanned it quickly, his expression shifting from surprise to grit. Looking up at the assembled delegates, he took a deep breath. Esteemed colleagues, I've just received critical information that changes everything. Our preliminary scans of New Horizon have revealed something extraordinary. Alien ruins of ancient origin on the planet's surface. A collective gasp rippled through the chamber. Joshua pressed on, seizing the moment. I propose we form a multi-species expedition to investigate these ruins. This is an opportunity for unprecedented cooperation and scientific discovery. Earth, the Vorgans, and any other interested council races should work together to uncover the secrets of New Horizon. The chamber erupted into a frenzy of discussion. After hours of intense debate and negotiation, the council agreed to Joshua's proposal. Within days, a team was assembled, including representatives from Earth, the Vorgons, and several other council races. As the expedition prepared to depart, Joshua found himself on board a specially designed shuttle, equipped with cutting-edge sensors and protective gear. He glanced around at his fellow team members, noting the mix of excitement and apprehension on their faces. Zara sat beside him, her violet eyes gleaming with anticipation. The shuttle descended through New Horizons' atmosphere, the planet's surface coming into sharp focus. Rolling plains of deep purple vegetation gave way to jagged rock formations, and there, nestled between two towering cliffs, was their destination, the entrance to a vast underground complex. As they touched down, Joshua activated his protective suit's systems. The air shimmered around him as the force field engaged. He turned to address the team. Remember, we're making history here. Stay alert, stay together, and let's see what New Horizon has to show us. The team approached the entrance, a massive stone archway covered in intricate, unfamiliar symbols. Dr. Kraz, a Vorgon scientist, stepped forward, his scales reflecting the dim light as he examined the markings. Fascinating, he murmured. These symbols don't match any known language in our databases. Joshua nodded activating the advanced AI system integrated into his suit. Let's see if our Earth tech can make sense of it. As the AI began processing the symbols, the ground beneath them trembled. The archway split down the middle, its halves sliding apart to reveal a dark passage leading into the planet's depths. The team exchanged glances before Joshua took the lead, activating his suit's illumination. As they descended, the passage opened into a vast chamber filled with what could only be described as technological marvels. As the team spread out to examine the chamber, a high-pitched whine filled the air. Panels in the wall slid open, revealing a series of automated defense systems. Beams of energy lanced out, forcing the expedition members to dive for cover. Everyone, stay calm! Joshua shouted, his mind racing. He turned to the human tech specialist. Can we use our AI to interface with their systems? As they continued their exploration, Joshua and Zara found themselves working in tandem, their growing bond evident in their seamless cooperation. They navigated through a series of chambers, each filled with more wonders than the last. After hours of exploration, they reached what appeared to be the heart of the complex. A massive door stood before them, covered in more of the mysterious symbols. As their AI deciphered the lock, the door slowly swung open, revealing a sight that took their breath away. A colossal alien supercomputer dominated the chamber, its crystalline structure pulsing with energy. Holographic displays surrounded it, 
showing streams of data in an alien language. Dr. Kraz approached the central console, his eyes wide with wonder. This, this is beyond our wildest dreams. The scientific and technological data stored here could revolutionize our understanding of the universe. As the team began to interface with the supercomputer, Joshua received an urgent communication from Captain Chen in orbit. Ambassador, Chen's voice crackled through the comm. We've got a situation up here. News of the discovery has spread. Ships from multiple council races are arriving, demanding access to the ruins. The situation is becoming volatile. Joshua frowned, knowing the delicate balance they'd struck could easily shatter. Understood, Captain. Do what you need to keep the peace. We'll expedite our work here. He turned to the team, his expression grave. We need to work quickly. The situation in orbit is escalating. As they delved deeper into the alien database, the true magnitude of their discovery became clear. The information stored within the supercomputer wasn't just scientific. It contained weapons technology far beyond anything currently known to the Council races. Joshua found himself facing a moral dilemma. The potential for this technology to upset the balance of power in the galaxy was immense. He pulled Zara and Dr. Kraz aside, his voice low. We need to decide how to handle this information. If it falls into the wrong hands, it could lead to devastation on an unimaginable scale. Before they could discuss further, a low hum filled the chamber. The supercomputer's displays flickered, and a beam of energy shot upward, passing through the rock above as if it were nothing. Dr. Kraz studied the readouts, his scales paling. It appears we've activated some kind of communication system. It's sending a signal out into deep space. The implications hit Joshua like a physical blow. They might have just alerted the original creators of these ruins, or worse, their descendants, to their presence. As the team raced to extract as much information as possible from the database, Joshua's mind whirled with the potential consequences of their actions. The future of galactic civilization could very well hinge on the decisions they made in the coming hours. In orbit, Captain Chen's voice came through the comm once more, tense but controlled. Ambassador, I'm implementing emergency protocols. We're establishing a protective field around the planet. It should buy us some time, but we need a plan. Joshua looked at Zara and Dr. Kraz, seeing his own mix of excitement and apprehension mirrored in their eyes. They had unlocked secrets beyond imagination. But at what cost? As they prepared to present their findings to the Galactic Council, Joshua knew that the greatest challenges, and perhaps the greatest opportunities, still lay ahead. Ahead, as Joshua contemplated their next move, a piercing alarm shattered the tense silence of the chamber. The team's attention snapped to the supercomputer's central display, where a pulsing red icon appeared. Dr. Kraz's fingers danced across the holographic interface. The signal we inadvertently sent, it's received a response. Joshua's stomach dropped. From where? Deep space. Dr. Kraz replied, his scales shifting color in agitation. Something is coming. Something big. Before they could process this information, Captain Chen's voice crackled through their comms. Ambassador, we're detecting a massive energy signature approaching the system at unprecedented speeds. The Council is calling an emergency session. You're needed up here immediately. Joshua exchanged glances with Zara and Dr. Kraz. Understood, Captain. We're on our way. As the team prepared to leave, Zara noticed a faint shimmer in the air near one of the chamber walls. Wait, she called out, approaching the anomaly. Her hand passed through the apparent solid surface, revealing a hidden passage. Another chamber, Joshua breathed, peering into the darkness beyond. Time was of the essence, but the potential importance of this discovery couldn't be ignored. They stepped through the hidden entrance, their suit lights illuminating a small room, dominated by a circular platform. Dr. Kraz's eyes widen. This appears to be some form of teleportation device. Joshua nodded, his mind racing. Document everything you can. We don't have time to activate it now, but this could be crucial information for the Council. Minutes later, they were aboard their shuttle, racing back to orbit. The scene that greeted them was one of controlled chaos. Dozens of ships from various Council races had arrived 
forming a protective cordon around New Horizon. In the main chamber, the emergency session was already underway. Joshua, Zara, and Dr. Kraz took their seats as the current speaker, a Vorgan diplomat, finished his address. And I say we must prepare for conflict. We cannot allow an unknown force to threaten our territories. Joshua stood, addressing the assembly. Esteemed colleagues, before we resort to military action, we must consider the implications of what we've discovered on New Horizon. He outlined their findings, emphasizing the advanced nature of the technology and the potential for peaceful contact. As he spoke, a new figure entered the chamber, commanding immediate attention. The admiral, a tall man with steel-gray hair and piercing blue eyes, strode to the center of the room. While I appreciate Ambassador Morgan's optimism, we must be prepared for all scenarios. I've brought the HSS Excalibur to bolster our defenses. As the council session adjourned, Joshua received an urgent message from Captain Chen. Ambassador, the alien vessel has entered the system. It's enormous. Joshua, Zara, and Dr. Kraz rushed to the observation deck. The sight that greeted them was awe-inspiring. The alien ship dwarfed even the largest council vessels, its smooth, organic lines defying conventional engineering principles. It's beautiful, Zara breathed, her violet eyes wide with wonder. Admiral Blackwood joined them, his face a mask of controlled concern. Beauty can be deceiving, Ms. Vega. Captain Chen, prepare the Thunderbolt for first contact procedures. Joshua turned to the Admiral. Sir, with all due respect, we should approach this diplomatically. These beings might be related to the creators of the ruins on New Horizon. Blackwood nodded curtly. Agreed, Ambassador. That's why you'll be joining Captain Chen on the Thunderbolt. Your expertise will be crucial in establishing communication. Aboard the Thunderbolt, the atmosphere was tense but focused. Captain Chen, a composed woman with short black hair, greeted them on the bridge. Ambassador Dr. Kraz, we've been broadcasting greetings on various frequencies. So far, no response. Hours passed, the alien vessel maintaining its silent vigil beyond New Horizons' orbit. Then, without warning, the Thunderbolt's communication array lit up. We're receiving a transmission, Chen announced, her fingers dancing across the console. It's mathematics, complex equations. Dr. Kraz nodded, his scales shimmering with excitement. They call themselves the Precursors. They're the original creators of the ruins on New Horizon. As they worked to interpret the data, alarms blared across the bridge. Captain Chen's voice cut through the chaos. Vorgon warships breaking formation. They're approaching the precursor vessel. Admiral Blackwood's voice crackled over the comm. Captain Chen, intercept those ships. Use non-lethal force if necessary, but do not let them jeopardize this encounter. The Thunderbolt sprang into action, its advanced propulsion systems allowing it to outmaneuver the Vorgon ships with ease. Chen's tactical brilliance shone as she used the ship's non-lethal weapons to disable the Vorgon vessels without causing casualties. As the situation stabilized, a new transmission came through from the precursor ship. Joshua's eyes widened as he interpreted the message. They're impressed by our handling of the situation. They're requesting a face-to-face -face meeting. Admiral Blackwood's voice held a note of triumph. Excellent work, Captain Chen. The meeting will take place aboard the Thunderbolt. Let's show these precursors what humanity is capable of. As preparations for the historic meeting began, Joshua and Zara worked tirelessly to establish a framework for communication. The anticipation on the ship was palpable as the moment of contact drew near. Finally, the alert came. The precursor delegation was ready to board. Joshua, Zara, Dr. Kraz, Captain Chen, and Admiral Blackwood assembled in the Thunderbolt's main conference room, their hearts racing. The door slid open, revealing beings that defied imagination. Tall and ethereal, the precursors seemed to glow from within, their translucent skin shimmering with an inner light. As they entered the room, a hush fell over the assembled humans and council representatives. Admiral Blackwood stepped forward, his face a mask of diplomatic poise. On behalf of humanity in the Galactic Council, I welcome you aboard the HSS Thunderbolt. The lead precursor inclined its head, a gesture that somehow conveyed both acknowledgement and assessment. 
As it opened its mouth to speak, Joshua felt the weight of history pressing down upon them. The future of galactic politics hung in the balance, and humanity stood at the center of it all. The lead precursor's voice resonated through the conference room, a melodic timbre that seemed to bypass their ears and speak directly to their minds. We are Xylos, emissary of the precursor conclave. We come seeking understanding and offering knowledge. Admiral Blackwood nodded, his posture relaxed but alert. We are honored by your presence, Xylos. I am Admiral Xander Blackwood, representing humanity and the Galactic Council. Joshua stepped forward, his translator working overtime to keep up with the nuanced communication. Xylos, we have many questions about your civilization and your connection to the ruins on New Horizon. Xylos' luminescent eyes studied Joshua intently. You have awakened our long-dormant outpost. We have observed your progress since then with great interest and some concern. The atmosphere in the room tensed at these words. Zara, ever the diplomat, quickly interjected, We assure you, our intentions are peaceful. We seek only to learn and grow. Xylos inclined their head, a gesture that seemed both acknowledgement and assessment. Your species shows great potential, but also great capacity for conflict. We have witnessed your recent altercation with the Vorgon vessels. Admiral Blackwood's lips pursed almost imperceptibly. An unfortunate misunderstanding. We strive for peaceful resolutions whenever possible. Indeed, Xylos replied. It is this capacity for both conflict and cooperation that intrigues us. We propose an exchange of knowledge, but with conditions. As Xylos outlined their proposal for a permanent precursor presence on New Horizon, Joshua could see the reactions rippling through the assembled representatives. The Vorgon diplomat's face darkened with each word, while the Arcturian representative leaned forward, eyes wide with excitement. Before anyone could respond, alarms blared throughout the ship. Captain Chen's voice cut through the chaos. Admiral, we have multiple unidentified vessels appearing in the system. They're on an attack vector towards the precursor ship. Admiral Blackwood was already moving, barking orders into his comm unit. All ships, defensive positions! Protect the precursor vessel at all costs! Through the viewports, Joshua watched in horror as a group of Vorgon warships unleashed a barrage of energy weapons unlike anything he'd seen before. The beams streaked towards the massive precursor ship, their intensity causing the very fabric of space to distort. But before anyone could react, the precursor vessel pulsed with a soft blue light. The incoming weapons fire simply vanished, as if it had never existed. The shockwave from this defense, however, rippled outward with terrifying force. Alarms screamed anew as the thunderbolt rocked violently. Captain Chen's voice, tight with tension, filled the room. Admiral, the planet, the shockwave is destabilizing New Horizons' orbit. Joshua watched in stunned silence as holographic displays showed the planet's erratic new trajectory. If left unchecked, New Horizon would tear itself apart within hours. As the human ships moved into position, their engines straining against the colossal forces at play, Joshua turned to Xylos. Please, can you help us? Your technology far surpasses ours. Xylos regarded Joshua for a long moment, their inner light pulsing in a complex pattern. Then, without a word, they raised a hand. Outside, the massive precursor vessel began to move. With breathtaking grace, it positioned itself above New Horizon. A soft, golden light enveloped the planet, its chaotic movements gradually slowing. On the bridge of the Thunderbolt, Captain Chen worked furiously at her console. It's working, combining our gravitational fields with the precursor ships. We're doing it. For tense minutes, Human and Precursor technology worked in concert, their combined efforts slowly but surely pulling New Horizon back from the brink of destruction. As the planet's orbit finally stabilized, a collective sigh of relief swept through the ship. Admiral Blackwood turned to Xylos, his expression a mixture of gratitude and willpower. Thank you for your assistance. This incident demonstrates the potential of our cooperation, but also the very real dangers we face. Xylos nodded, their forms shimmering with what Joshua interpreted as agreement. Indeed, the actions of the few have endangered many. It is clear that closer cooperation between our peoples is not just beneficial, but necessary. 
Over the next hours, as the Galactic Council convened an emergency session, Joshua found himself at the center of a whirlwind of diplomacy. The Vorgon attack had backfired spectacularly, strengthening the case for closer ties with the precursors. Admiral Blackwood, seizing the moment, proposed the formation of a joint task force. A combined effort, he argued, leveraging human ingenuity and precursor technology. This force would protect New Horizon and oversee the controlled dissemination of advanced technology. As debates raged, Joshua saw an opportunity. We should include representatives from all council races in this task force, he suggested. It would allay fears of human or precursor dominance. Zara, ever quick to support, added, Arcturian expertise in xenobiology and cultural integration would be invaluable in such an endeavor. This revelation sent shockwaves through the assembled diplomats. The potential for technological advancement was staggering, but so too were the risks. After hours of intense negotiation, a consensus emerged. The Galactic Cooperative for Advanced Technologies, GCAT, was established with its headquarters on New Horizon. Led by a council of human precursor and rotating Galactic Council representatives, GCAT would explore the precursor outposts and safely integrate advanced technologies into galactic society. Admiral Blackwood, appointed as the human chair of GCAT, addressed the assembled representatives. Today marks a new chapter in galactic history. Together we will unlock the secrets of the past to secure a brighter future for all our peoples. As the ceremony concluded, Joshua found himself on the observation deck of the Thunderbolt, gazing out at the shimmering form of the precursor vessel. Captain Chen joined him, her usual composure tinged with excitement. We're to be the flagship for the upcoming expeditions, she informed him. The adventure of a lifetime, eh, Ambassador? Your thoughts, Ambassador? Chen asked, her eyes still fixed on the stars. Chen nodded, her expression thoughtful. And our first test is just around the corner. We've received new orders from Admiral Blackwood. The Thunderbolt is to join the Excalibur on an expedition to a newly discovered precursor outpost. Indeed, Chen confirmed. Long-range scans picked it up in a distant star system. The Admiral wants us there as soon as possible. We'll be serving as support for the Excalibur. Over the next few days, the Thunderbolt buzzed with activity as the crew prepared for their upcoming mission. Joshua found himself working closely with Zara and Dr. Kraz, poring over the limited data they had on the new outpost. As they approached the star system, Joshua stood on the bridge, watching as the swirling colors of FTL travel gave way to normal space. The Excalibur emerged alongside them, its massive form dwarfing the Thunderbolt. Captain, the sensor officer called out, his voice tense. I'm detecting multiple ships in orbit around the third planet. Vorgon signatures. As the human ships moved into formation, Joshua watched the silent Vorgon vessels with growing unease. Despite repeated hails, the enemy ships remained ominously quiet. Admiral, Joshua said, stepping forward, perhaps we should consider a diplomatic approach. If we can open a dialogue... Blackwood cut him off with a sharp gesture. We tried diplomacy at New Horizon, Ambassador. These extremists only understand one language. He turned to his tactical officer. Prepare the EMP weapon. Joshua exchanged a worried glance with Zara. The new weapon, developed from precursor technology, was largely untested. Using it here could have far-reaching consequences. Before he could voice his concerns, Blackwood gave the order. Excalibur, fire the EMP! A pulse of invisible energy erupted from the human flagship, washing over the Vorgon ships. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. Then, one by one, the enemy vessels began to drift, their lights flickering and dying. Direct hit, Chen reported, a note of awe in her voice. The Vorgon ships are disabled. As the remaining enemy vessels signaled their surrender, Joshua felt a mix of relief and apprehension. The human technological advantage was clear, but at what cost to future relations? With the blockade neutralized, the expedition made its way to the planet's surface. Joshua found himself part of the landing party, along with Zara, Dr. Kraz, and a contingent of security personnel. As they approached the precursor facility, Joshua couldn't help but marvel at its organic architecture. The structure seemed to grow from the landscape, 
its sweeping lines and iridescent surfaces unlike anything he'd ever seen. Dr. Kraz scuttled forward, his scales shimmering with excitement. Fascinating. The integration with the local ecosystem is far more advanced than what we observed on New Horizon. Their wonderment was short-lived, however, as they encountered an invisible barrier blocking their path to the main complex. Kraz, consulting data provided by Xylos, identified a series of activation nodes scattered around the perimeter. It appears to require specific genetic markers, the Arcturian scientist explained. A security measure, no doubt. To everyone's surprise, when Joshua approached one of the nodes, it pulsed with a soft light. Human DNA, Kraz breathed. It's a partial match. With Joshua's activation of several nodes, the team gained limited access to the facility's outer sections. Inside, they discovered vast repositories of advanced technology, including designs for FTL engines that made their current drives look primitive by comparison. As they fled the facility, Joshua's mind raced. The automated defenses were far more aggressive than anything they'd encountered on New Horizon. This outpost was older, more advanced, and far more dangerous. Back at the landing site, Admiral Blackwood's face was a mask of frustration as he received their report. We can't let this setback stop us, he growled. I propose we use the Excalibur's main cannon to breach the facility's defenses. Joshua stepped forward, his voice firm despite his racing heart. Admiral, with all due respect, that's too risky. We could destroy priceless artifacts, not to mention valuable data. Their argument was cut short by an urgent communication from GCAT headquarters. The holographic image of a visibly shaken officer appeared before them. Admiral Blackwood, we've detected multiple unidentified vessels entering the galaxy. They're coming from intergalactic space, sir, and their speed. It's beyond anything we've ever seen. Sir, I think we may have found a way in, she said, her eyes gleaming with tenacity. The Thunderbolt's AI has been analyzing the data from the outer sections. We believe we can recalibrate our shields to safely penetrate deeper into the complex. As the group huddled around Chen, discussing the possibilities and risks of her plan, Joshua's mind raced. They stood at a crossroads, facing a choice that would echo through history. Push forward into the unknown depths of the Precursor facility, or return to face an unprecedented threat to the galaxy. The weight of the decision hung in the air, as tangible as the alien world beneath their feet. Whatever path they chose, Joshua knew with certainty that nothing would ever be the same again. Joshua took a deep breath, his mind racing with the implications of their discovery and the looming threat. We need to approach this strategically, he said, turning to face Admiral Blackwood and the others. The precursor facility and these incoming vessels could be connected. We can't afford to ignore either. Admiral Blackwood nodded, his expression grave. Agreed. We'll split our forces. He turned to Captain Chen. Sarah, I want you to take the Thunderbolt and continue exploring the Precursor outpost. Your plan to recalibrate the shields might just work. Take Dr. Kraz and a team of our best scientists with you. Chen straightened, her eyes gleaming with perseverance. Understood, sir. We'll unlock the facility's secrets. As the two groups prepared to part ways, Joshua approached Chen. Be careful in there, Sarah. We don't know what other defenses that facility might have. Hours later, aboard the Thunderbolt, Chen stood on the bridge as her crew implemented the shield recalibration. Dr. Kraz scuttled back and forth between consoles, his scales shimmering with excitement. Fascinating, he exclaimed. The new frequency is allowing us to harmonize with the facility's energy signature. We should be able to penetrate much deeper now. Chen nodded. Helm, take us in. Nice and easy. The Thunderbolt glided towards the Precursor facility, its recalibrated shields shimmering with an otherworldly light. As they passed through the outer defenses, the swarms of nanobots parted like schools of fish, leaving the ship untouched. Inside the facility, Chen led a team through vast, echoing chambers. The architecture was even more intricate here with pulsing lines of energy coursing through the walls and floors. Dr. Kraz's instruments beeped and whirred as he took readings. Captain, one of the science officers called out, you need to see this. Chen followed the officer's gesture and felt her breath catch in her throat. 
Before them stretched an enormous hangar filled with sleek, otherworldly vessels. Each ship was easily twice the size of the Thunderbolt, their hulls gleaming with a metal unlike anything Chen had ever seen. Dr. Kraz's eyes widened as he scanned the ships. Incredible. These vessels, they're capable of intergalactic travel. The power requirements alone are beyond our current understanding of physics. As the team spread out to examine the ships, Chen's communications officer approached her. Captain, we found something else. A database containing star charts, but not just of our galaxy. These maps show dozens of nearby galaxies, all with detailed navigation data. Chen felt a chill run down her spine. The precursors weren't just an advanced civilization. They were intergalactic explorers. Meanwhile, aboard the Excalibur, Admiral Blackwood, Joshua, and Zara emerged from FTL travel near New Horizon. The planet's orbital defenses were on high alert, a testament to the gravity of the situation. As they docked, Joshua turned to Zara. We need to present a united front to the Council. This threat affects all of us. Zara nodded, her luminous eyes reflecting the starlight. Agreed. The Arcturians will stand with humanity. Admiral Blackwood stepped forward, his presence commanding immediate attention. Esteemed members of the Council, we face an unprecedented situation. Ambassador Morgan will present our findings. Joshua took a deep breath and addressed the assembly. He detailed their discoveries at the Precursor Outpost and the approaching unknown vessels, emphasizing the potential connection between the two. These ships are unlike anything we've encountered, Joshua explained. Their technology appears to be related to the Precursors, but with significant advancements. We believe they may be coming from beyond our galaxy. Zara stepped forward, her voice calm but firm. We cannot jump to conclusions. First contact with an intergalactic civilization could be the greatest moment in our history. We must approach this with open minds and peaceful intentions. As the debate raged on, Admiral Blackwood's aide approached with urgent news. Sir, the unknown vessels have entered the outer reaches of Council space. They're heading directly for New Horizon. Blackwood's eyes narrowed. How long until they arrive? At their current speed, less than six hours. Despite some objections, the Council approved the plan. As the Excalibur's crew prepared the broadcast, Joshua worked with linguists and mathematicians to craft the message. Zara provided insights from Arcturian philosophy, adding depth to their communication attempt. Just as they finalized the message, alarms blared throughout the system. The unknown vessels had suddenly accelerated, covering the vast distance to New Horizon in minutes. The Galactic Council's defensive fleet scrambled into position, with the Excalibur taking the lead. Joshua stood on the bridge, his heart pounding as he watched the massive alien ships approach. For a moment, silence reigned. Then a transmission came through, using the same multi-layered method as their broadcast. Joshua listened intently as the message was decoded. They call themselves the Nomad Confluence, he announced, his voice filled with awe. They claim to be descendants of precursor explorers who left our galaxy eons ago. They've returned home. Captain Chen's hologram appeared, her expression a mix of excitement and concern. Admiral, we've managed to activate one of the precursor vessels. The technology is beyond anything we've ever seen. But there's a problem. The activation triggered some kind of automated distress signal. It's broadcasting to coordinates deep in intergalactic space, right where these nomads came from. Admiral Blackwood absorbed this information, his mind racing with the potential consequences. He turned to Joshua and the Council representatives. We stand at a crossroads. Our actions here will shape the future of not just our galaxy, but potentially many others. We must proceed with caution, diplomacy, and strength. As the Galactic Council prepared for their first face-to-face -face meeting with the Nomad representatives, Joshua couldn't help but feel that everything, the discovery of the precursor outposts, the conflict with the Vorgans, the formation of Gisiat, had been leading to this moment. The fate of interstellar civilization hung in the balance, and humanity found itself at the center of it all. The Excalibur's docking bay opened, ready to receive the Nomad delegation. Joshua straightened his uniform, exchanging a glance with Zara and Admiral Blackwood. 
Whatever came next would change the course of history forever. The docking bay doors slid open with a hiss, revealing the cavernous interior of the Excalibur. Joshua took a deep breath, his eyes fixed on the sleek shuttle that would soon bring the Nomad delegation aboard. Beside him, Zara stood tall, her luminous eyes reflecting the anticipation that filled the air. The Admiral's voice was low but tinged with awe-inspiring energy. That was Captain Chen, the precursor vessel they activated at the outpost. It's interfacing with the Thunderbolt, upgrading it beyond our wildest expectations. Zara tilted her head, her antennae twitching with interest. What kind of upgrades? We're not entirely sure yet, Blackwood replied, but Chen says the ship's capabilities are expanding exponentially. I've ordered her to bring the Thunderbolt here immediately. This could change everything. Before Joshua could respond, a collective gasp rippled through the assembled dignitaries. The Nomad ship had arrived, its massive form eclipsing the stars beyond the docking bay's force field. It dwarfed even the largest council vessels, its hull shimmering with an otherworldly iridescence. As the Nomad shuttle gracefully entered the bay, a blinding flash of light erupted just outside. The HSS Thunderbolt materialized, its familiar form now pulsing with veins of energy that coursed across its hull like liquid starlight. By the cosmic concordance, Zara breathed, her eyes wide. Is that really the Thunderbolt? Joshua nodded, speechless. The ship that had once been dismissed as tiny now radiated power beyond comprehension. Its arrival sent murmurs of astonishment through both the council members and the approaching nomad delegation. Admiral Blackwood straightened his uniform. Well, he said with a hint of a smile, this should make for an interesting first impression. The Nomad Shuttle's ramp extended, and the delegation emerged. Joshua's breath caught in his throat as he beheld beings that seemed to embody the majesty of the cosmos itself. Their forms were diverse, some humanoid, others defying easy classification, but all bore unmistakable hints of precursor ancestry in their features. As introductions were made and the group moved towards the specially prepared meeting chamber, Joshua couldn't help but notice the Nomad's reaction to the Thunderbolt. Their expressions ranged from surprise to admiration, with some even displaying what looked like concern. Inside the chamber, the atmosphere crackled with tension and possibility. Joshua took his place beside Admiral Blackwood and Zara, facing the nomad leaders across a table that seemed to glow with an inner light. The lead nomad, a being of swirling energy contained within a vaguely humanoid form, spoke first. Its voice resonated not just in the air, but in the minds of all present. We are impressed. Your species has advanced far more rapidly than we anticipated. The successful integration of precursor technology, especially on such a scale, is unprecedented for a young race. Admiral Blackwood nodded graciously. Thank you. Humanity has always been driven to explore, to push boundaries. When we discovered the precursor outposts, we saw an opportunity to learn, to grow. Another nomad, this one with crystalline features that refracted light in mesmerizing patterns, leaned forward. But do you truly understand what you've awakened? The power you now wield could reshape galaxies, or destroy them. Joshua felt the weight of countless civilizations' futures pressing down on him. He chose his words carefully. We understand the responsibility that comes with this knowledge. That's why we're here, to learn from you to find a way forward that benefits all. The discussion that followed was unlike any diplomatic exchange in human history. The nomads spoke of cosmic cycles spanning billions of years, of civilizations rising and falling across multiple galaxies. It became clear that they were not a unified force, but a collective of factions with differing views on how to interact with younger races. Some nomads argued passionately for alliance and mentorship, Seeing in humanity and the other council races the potential for true cosmic citizenship, others viewed them with barely concealed disdain, considering them unworthy of the precursor legacy. As the debate grew heated, alarms suddenly blared throughout the station. A tactical hologram sprang to life in the center of the room, showing a nomad warship breaking formation and opening fire on New Horizon. The lead nomad's form pulsed with what might have been anger or shame. Extremists, 
They believe only we should control precursor technology. We must stop them before... The room shook as the station's defenses engaged, only to be overwhelmed by the advanced weaponry of the rogue ship. Admiral Blackwood was already moving, barking orders into his comlink. Chen, get the Thunderbolt out there now. Engage that ship, but do not destroy it if possible. On the hologram, they watched as the Thunderbolt streaked from its docking position, its movements impossibly fast and precise. The two ships engaged in a battle that seemed to defy the laws of physics, weaving between weapon discharges that could vaporize entire cities. Joshua turned to the nomad leaders, his mind racing. We need to end this quickly before more lives are lost. Is there any way you can communicate with the rogue ship? Make them stand down? The crystalline nomad shook its head, sending prismatic light dancing across the walls. They've cut off all standard channels. They believe they're saving our future by destroying yours. Zara stepped forward, her eyes blazing with dedication. Then we must show them a future worth saving, one where we all have a place. She turned to Joshua, an idea forming between them without words. Joshua nodded, understanding. He addressed the assembled beings, his voice steady despite the battle raging outside. We propose the formation of an intergalactic council, not just the nomad confluence in our galactic council, but the rediscovered precursor entities as well, a unified governing body to guide us all into a new era of cooperation and discovery. The nomads exchanged looks of surprise and consideration. Before they could respond, Captain Chen's voice crackled over the comm system. Admiral, we found a way to end this. All eyes turned to the hologram as the Thunderbolt executed a maneuver that seemed to bend reality itself. The ship appeared to be in multiple places at once, confounding the rogue vessel's targeting systems. With surgical precision, Chen disabled the enemy ship without destroying it. A collective exhale filled the room as the immediate threat passed. The lead nomad turned to Joshua, its energy form pulsing with what might have been respect. Your people have wielded precursor technology with both power and restraint. Perhaps, perhaps you are worthy inheritors after all. As the nomad leaders conferred among themselves, Joshua caught Zara's eye. In that moment, surrounded by beings from across the cosmos, he felt the first stirrings of something more than just diplomatic cooperation between them. Admiral Blackwood's voice cut through his thoughts. They're ready to begin formal negotiations for this intergalactic council of yours. Joshua nodded, squaring his shoulders. The fate of multiple galaxies hung in the balance, and humanity stood at the center of it all. As he prepared to help shape the future of cosmic civilization, Joshua couldn't help but marvel at how far they'd come from that tiny, laughable fleet that had first ventured into the stars. The real work was just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.